Now, before I start the video, I would like to publicly say that the Galaxy S23 Ultra is the best phone in 2023. And let me tell you why. Now, over the last 10 years, I've had many great phones from the Galaxy S3 to the iPhone 5S and many of the newer phones that we all enjoy. And I can truly say that when it comes to the Galaxy S23 Ultra, this is the most exciting functional phone that I've used in years. It gave me a damn near perfect experience, even after using it on a daily for over a month. And like I said before, I don't see any other phone competing. The S23 Ultra has a top tier display and handles powerful video games very smoothly. It has an amazing camera that takes really great photos and videos, and it's an all around great phone that has has been performing very well on a consistent basis. And even though I've had some minor nitpicks while using the S23 Ultra, it's still a really great phone and I wanted to share my experience with it after a month of use. Now the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 6.8 inch dynamic AMOLED display that was very impressive from the start. The combination of brightness, resolution, color, and sharpness makes it stand out as a top tier display. Whenever I'm scrolling through my phone, it looked very nice, everything looked smooth, the responsiveness was very precise, and I had no complaints about the overall feel. And even after a month of use, I still didn't get any scratches on it and I'm very happy since a lot of other phones tend to suck at scratch resistance. Until this day, I still haven't put a screen protector on. Now the S23 Ultra has a 120 hertz refresh rate. Scrolling through the OS and many different apps felt as smooth as ever. And since the display has great responsiveness, it made everything feel even more precise, smooth, and sharp. The display can also drop down to one hertz whenever it needs to preserve battery life. So if you're someone who wants that extra battery life and doesn't really care about 120, the S23 Ultra is definitely for you. Now the bezels are extremely small. Right here, you can see that they're wrapped nicely around the screen and are much cleaner overall. The hole punch camera is also very small, so it won't bother you whenever you're using your phone. And this helped out a lot when I was doing things like gaming or watching a movie. And now when it comes to brightness, the S23 Ultra is at 1750 nits, which is really good for whenever you're using your phone outside. No matter how much the sun was shining, I could see everything perfectly and you could put the brightness to the maximum if you needed to be brighter. And something that I didn't like about the S23 Ultra's display was the facial recognition. Even after a month of use, there were still many times where it wasn't working out. Whenever I was in a gym, in bed, or outside, it still wasn't able to read my face all the time. And if it was working, I would sometimes have to get it on multiple tries, which was very annoying. Now the fingerprint scanner worked much better. It was very fast and was the reason why I didn't want to use facial recognition. It rarely misread my fingerprint and I was very satisfied with it. Now when it comes to the size of the S23 Ultra, I can't tell you whether or not you will love it or hate it, but I do want to list some pros and cons that you can look out for. Now the pros of having a big screen is that the viewing experience is much better, the battery is bigger so it'll be able to last longer, and bigger phones tend to have slightly better resolutions. And now the cons of having a big screen is that it makes it much harder to use with one hand. Trying to simply reach the top of the screen requires more work, and you'll need some pretty big pockets if you want to stir your phone, but again, I want to let you guys outweigh the pros and cons because everyone's needs are different. Now the responsiveness still holds up very well after a month of use, and is easily my favorite part of the screen its quick and snappiness made the phone feel not only good but fast and again i want to give you guys a side-by-side -side comparison with how quick and snappy it is right here i have my pixel 7 pro and as you can see the animations are very fast and it really gives you an idea of how quick the s23 ultra is now the resolution and viewing experience of the s23 ultra's display is an amazing benefit when it comes to consuming media and playing games gaming was something that i did a ton of when using my s23 ultra something that i noticed was that no matter how long my gaming sessions were the phone never got hot and was always able to stay cool and the main game that i did play was asphalt 9 and that game takes up a good amount of space and power so it was really good to see that the s23 ultra could handle it with ease and i was also able to see everything very clearly when watching videos and i wanted to give you guys an idea of what it would look like when watching something and playing the game Now the S Pen on the S23 Ultra is pretty much as good as last year's S22 Ultra. The screen latency between the pen and the screen was basically non-existent. The palm rejection has gotten much better since the last update, and I feel like if you're into things like coloring or drawing or anything that the S Pen has to offer, then you'll really be satisfied. And for me personally, the only reason that I use my S Pen is to sign contracts for sponsorships, and whenever I'm in a gym on a bike, I will be watching a video, and once I was ready to change the video, I will use the wand feature to control the volume and change the video. And besides that, I really didn't use my 
S Pen as much as I did with the S22 Ultra. I think I was really too satisfied with the S23 Ultra as a regular phone, and using the S Pen didn't even cross my mind half the time. I have gotten into drawing a little bit, but again, I really have to try to use it on a daily basis. The only problem that I have with the S Pen is that you can write text messages and it'll play out on screen, but you have to write it extremely fast and extremely neat for it to work. So it really just ends up being pretty hard. But again, the S Pen is a really cool thing to have, and I feel like you can get some really good use out of it, especially when watching content and making art. Now the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 5000 mAh battery that not only has outdone the S22 Ultra, but it was also able to give me a full day of battery life on a consistent basis. And mind you, I'm the type of person that is using on my phone all day doing things like writing scripts, planning b-roll, shooting videos, scrolling through social media, watching YouTube videos, and texting my friends. And I'm usually getting over 8 hours of screen time a day, and I only charge my phone when I go to sleep. Again, I don't cut any corners, I always have 5G on, no auto brightness, I maxed out the resolution, and I never used power saving mode, so I was extremely impressed and even when i was gaming it would hurt the battery a little but not too much on my heavy asphalt 9 gaming sessions i would game for about two hours and my battery would take a 20 percent hit which is much better than a lot of other phones that i use for gaming and if i could give you guys a quick estimate i would say that my battery is usually on 30 percent by the end of the day when i wasn't gaming and about 10 to 15 percent when i was gaming which is really good and i still only charge it once a day and now the last thing that i wanted to touch on when it came to the battery was the charging i used my 45 watt fast charger and my phone was able to charge from zero to 100% in under an hour. So if you do find yourself in a situation where you forgot to charge your phone, you could put it on a charger while you're getting something done. And by the time you're done running an errand or taking a shower, it should be on at least 80 to 85%. So you really won't have to wait too long for it to charge up. Now looking at software, the S23 Ultra supports Android 13 and is also supported by One UI. And not only was it incredibly smooth, but there are also many different features that make it the ultimate phone as far as customization. I like how I can stay connected to my Google apps and calendar. I like how I can edit my widgets and make them dark or transparent to fit certain themes. I can use custom wallpapers. The always on display was much more customizable than most flagships. I can edit how I want my display to react to notifications. And there were many different customizations that you can do to make this phone truly yours. And in terms of software sleekness, I felt the sleekness all the way through. Samsung phones are typically very sharp when it comes to optimizing software. So if you want a phone that responds very very fast, then the S23 Ultra is right for you. I also decided to test out some games on the S23 Ultra. I play Asphalt 9, which is a game that can really test out the chip, and as you can see, it held up very well, and I didn't get any lags while playing. And now the final thing that I wanted to note was that the S23 Ultra will be getting 4 years worth of software upgrades, so when it comes to longevity, it's definitely got you covered. Now just like the S22 Ultra, the S23 Ultra has some really loud speakers that were very good whenever I used them. I would usually use them in a the house whenever watching videos on social media or YouTube, and I didn't have to turn it all the way up because of how loud they were on the lower tiers of volume. I tested out how they sounded when playing music, and if I'm being honest, they're loud and I was really surprised to say that I didn't experience a dip in quality. And right here, I'm going to give you guys an idea of how the speakers sound. Now the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a 200 megapixel main camera along with a 10 megapixel telephoto and periscope telephoto while also having a 12 megapixel ultra wide and based on my usage over the past month I would say that the pictures still look really good. Now starting with zoom modes, the S23 Ultra has a couple of different zoom modes and of course the quality gets dumbed down a little bit once you get closer, but once you get to 10X, it still looks really good. But again, anything above that, the quality will dip down. But I still found the zoom modes to be really good when compared to other smartphones. Now over the years, Galaxy shutter speed has gotten better, but it's still really not that good. I decided to test it out by shooting a moving car. And as you can see right here, the camera was able to capture most cars, but again, it still couldn't compare to my iPhone. Now looking at outside photos, the selfies were good, but still couldn't capture my skin tone as well as the Pixel or the iPhone. I think that as a person of color, they still are pretty lackluster. They make me look lighter than I actually am. And I also took some photos of random street objects, the sky, different aspects of nature. And I can honestly say that the S23 Ultra held up very well in these environments. And I'm really impressed since the sharpness did a lot better with the main camera. Now taking a look at inside photos, the S23 Ultra was able to capture everything very nice, and I found the pictures to be slightly less aggressive than the outside photos in terms of sharpness. And now when it comes to shooting video, the S23 Ultra is a really good phone that was able to capture quality shots. You have many different modes and frame rates to choose from, from 720p all the way up until 4K, and as far as frame rate, you have 24, 30, and 60. 
And again, I prefer to shoot my videos in 4K at 30 frames per second because not only does it look good in 4K, but 30 frames makes the movements feel realistic. The video stabilization is still really good. I shoot videos with my phone, so whenever I'm shooting my subject, it's very easy to track and the movements are very smooth, which was very impressive. So all in all, I would definitely say that the S23 Ultra has a really good video camera that will give you some consistently good shots. So if you're someone who wants to shoot content or you just want a solid camera, it's definitely got you covered. And also, here's some extra videos that I was able to get. So here's the final question. After a month of use, is the Galaxy S23 Ultra worth buying? Well, I would say that if you want a really reliable, powerful, fast phone, it's perfect. And I really mean it when I say that the S23 Ultra is a really great phone. It holds up really well. It's fast, powerful, and 100% worth the money. So if you are someone who does prefer the S23 Ultra, it's a phone that I think most people will be satisfied with. And you have really good customization, so that's an added benefit. But there it is, you guys. My review on the Galaxy S23 Ultra. And if you have any questions for me, you can ask them in the comment section down below. And also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Peace.